Welcome back to the RipeWave Audio community, where we explore together all types of home audio systems, from hi-fi to home theater. My name is John, and for this video, we look at the top AV processor separates between five and $10,000, which support immersive audio formats for at least 12 channels. This video complements the similar series in which we focused on AV processors under $5,000. If you missed the previous videos from the top AV immersive processors under $5,000 series, I have provided the links for your convenience in the description. In the last series, we identified the Anthem AVM70 as the top candidate to replace our Sony TAE 9000ES 5.1 surround processor with a modern immersive processor. As we determined at the conclusion of that series, that we will hold off on our purchase a bit longer until market conditions settle down, we have some time now to explore and further validate that selection. This time we are looking at the next tier up in the $5,000 to $10,000 range for at those models to better understand what we might gain if we're able to increase our budget. During this next series we will often look back to the top models under $5,000 to compare and examine what additional value you will get when you are willing to spend more. You may also recall from our Buyer's Guide series, uh, AV processors can cost in excess of $20,000. So we know that there is yet another tier beyond $10,000. However, we feel that $10,000 is the next inertia point where buyers will think twice about crossing the line and therefore caps off the next logical range. We're using the RipeWave Audio database to narrow down our choices once again. This database now contains data from 27 brands with a total of 160 models, which represent the full spectrum of AV processors for a broad range of customer needs. To make the choice easier, we will filter the data down to a more manageable list. This time, we applied the filters in a slightly different order, which we feel tells the story a little more clearly. First, we eliminate any discontinued products, leaving just the models which are actively promoted on the brand websites. Since our last series, more models have been dropped from active promotion, and this filter results in a 14% drop in candidates, down to 138 models. Next, we applied the price range filter, which produced the more dramatic drop in models, leaving only 8% of the database entries available. Eliminated with this round was models from Bryston, Datastat, Emotiva, Focal, Integra, Lexicon, Marantz, Meridian, Monoprice, Onkyo, Outlaw Audio, Pioneer, Rotel, Sony, Storm Audio, Theta Digital, Trinoff and Yamaha. This resulted in 13 models from seven brands remaining. Next, we removed any receiver models with onboard amplification, which left us with the same brands, but the count was dropped down to nine models, which is only 6% of the total database. Applying the immersive filter to weed out models under 12 channels had no effect as all AV processors in this price range support at least 12 channels. Those basic filters set our pool for this series to include models from Acurus, Anthem, Audio Control, JVL Synthesis, Lingdorf, Macintosh, and NAD. Gone from our previous series are the Arcam, Emotiva, Lexicon, Marantz, Monoprice, Rotel, and Yamaha brands as they don't have models that exceed $5,000 for a processor separate. As before, we believe that having a target speaker layout in mind is the most important step in starting an AV processor search. Our goal is still to establish a 7.2.4 configuration as a minimum, but we anticipate growing to 9.2.6 and beyond 
as we move along. As our 25 foot, 7.6 meter room can accommodate higher counts. Starting with four ceiling speakers, uh, that number could physically go as high as 10, but we are not certain there will be a noticeable difference past eight or even six speakers uh, in, in the ceiling. In our minds, six heights may be a good stopping point. That height limit plus uh, use of front wide channels uh, at ear level and multiple subwoofers could extend the processing needs to 17 channels or beyond. We also maintain our position that Dolby Atmos and DTSX are the must-have formats, but DTSX Pro has become a, more of a must-have format when processors support more than 13 channels as standard DTSX decoding is capped at 11.1. Given the limited content with Oral 3D and mixed reviews for the Oral 3D up mixer, that format is a nice to have. Brightwave Audio feels stronger about IMAX Enhance and Dolby Vision support, but not having support is not a deal breaker as we don't have a compatible TV at this time a support for these along with AK features would make us IMAX Dolby Vision and AK ready if we decide to upgrade our TV. Here are the models which we will examine by processor count. Many of these models were recently introduced to the market within the last few years. The exception is the Acurus ACK4 which was launched in 2015. Again, we notice that pricing is not entirely based on channel count. A 12-channel model can be several thousand dollars more than that of a 19-channel model. We believe there is a combination of component quality and brand premiums that can contribute to higher prices. All models are available for sale except the Anthem AVM90 that has been announced uh, but only available for pre-order at this time. It is interesting that the audio control Maestro X7 and Maestro X9 differ by $3,000, but appear on the surface to be very similar as both support the same 16 channel uh, of processing. In the next video, we will look at the DAX within these and expose at least one difference. With Macintosh finally dropping the older MX-122 and the MX-160 models from their website, their product positioning uh, has become clearer uh, as their prices better track channel count now. We look at Lingdorf as a brand for the first time, which we are excited to learn more about uh, these products, which are co-branded with Steinway and serve as a technology base for some models from Macintosh. While NAD has some models under $5,000, they are all receivers. You must jump to the $6,599 price of the M16 V2i to get an AV processor separate with the NAD brand. Acurus is a unique brand which only plays within this price range. Their approach to designing AV processors is a bit different and we look forward to exploring them further. Jumping into the feature comparison matrix, we will note that no models are THX certified, which is no different than the under $5,000 category and not a surprise given how THX certification has been trending downward. Again, all models support the two formats we must have Dolby Atmos and DTSX. It is disappointing to see the Anthem AVM90 is the only model over 13 channels with support for DTSX Pro, despite models being released since its availability. Even if DTSX Pro wasn't ready for a model's initial release, we should see upgrades that add this important enhancement for the popular format. What we do see more of is support for Oral 3D at this tier. 
Klingdorf, Macintosh, JBL Synthesis, and Audio Control all include this niche format. It will be interesting uh, to track Oral 3D adoption over the coming years. We are seeing greater support for IMAX and Enhance and Dolby Vision at this level, albeit no reports from NAD or Acuras supporting and Lingdorf only has Dolby Vision support advertised. All models have some form of room calibration. As with the lower tier, Dirac Live remains the most popular. Lingdorf, Acuras, and Anthem have developed a room calibration solution on their own. Anthem, Arc Genesis, and Dirac receive high marks. We usually see Dirac edging out Arc Genesis in comparative reviews. Lingdorf, Room Perfect, has a unique method to preserve the sound signature of the speaker during the process. As we have yet to read much about the quality of Room Perfect and Acuras aspect solutions, we have colored those table entries as a neutral color until we can better portray them against Dirac and Arc Genesis. We will speak more about speaker layouts in a later part of this series. What we will point out at this time is that this price point has models from Anthem and Acuras, which raise the counts to 19 and 20 speakers respectively. Otherwise, the layouts look very similar to those under $5,000. Quickly comparing a subset of the two price categories we see how similar these models look. It is interesting that in order to get all the formats in one processor, you must drop down a tier to the Marantz AV7706. Otherwise, the Macintosh MX123 and the Anthem AVM90 come the closest, but trade off DTSX Pro and Oral 3D support. Brightwave Audio will continue this review in part two with a video on the DACs these models have. With the data reviewed in this video, we will select a model that is standing out at this time. NAD and Acuras leave us wanting more as their published support is limited to Dolby Atmos and DTSX. With a known quality level for room correction using Arc Genesis, Support for the more useful immersive formats, DTSX Pro versus Oral 3D, a higher channel count, including support for four subwoofers, the Anthem AVM90 is the leader in this first round. Certainly, Anthem is on a roll on how they are selecting features and positioning their new models. It will be interesting to see if this trend continues. However, this is just the beginning of this series, and we know that the other models also have strong merits, and there are several models with high channel counts and subwoofer counts, so that is a plus. If you are in the market for an AV processor, what criteria are you using? Please include in the comments section, do you feel that you will get more when you jump up to this level? What additional attributes do you get if you are willing to spend more for your AV processor? That feedback would be useful to the RightWave Audio community. Furthermore, if you enjoyed this video and are interested in enhancing your audio experience, please like and subscribe to this RightWave Audio community and be sure to select the bell icon so you'll be notified as soon as the next video is posted. Until then, Keep evolving your audio experience.